Welcome back everybody to Alberta Angling. Thanks for tuning in again to another episode. Right now I'm uh, driving on Star Lake, which is about 30 minutes west of Edmonton, close to Jackfish Lake, which I did an episode uh, a couple weeks back. Anyways, uh, we're looking for stocked rainbows today and I've heard there's some, uh, there's some decent ones in here relative to the area around. So hopefully we can hook into a couple and uh, bring some up on top of the ice. Thanks for tuning in. Basically, it looks like someone else has been uh, in this spot already. I kind of scattered this spot out earlier on my uh, hummingbird. Got one of those Navionics uh, chips or cards that you put into your hummingbird uh, unit. And then uh, it's got a bunch of uh, maps of the lakes in, in Alberta. Lake Master doesn't have a chip yet for Alberta, so. But anyways, it's a good starting point and uh, it looks like there's a gradual drop off and I kind of want to be set up around 10 feet or so, maybe a little bit less and uh, towards a transition. So I'm just gonna drill in the same holes and see what kind of uh, uh, bottom uh, structure we got going on here and then hopefully set ourselves up on a, on a transition and then uh, we'll get the aqua view down there and set up the camera. So like I said, I'm in somebody's uh, spot from probably yesterday. We had some good weather last night. I mean, probably dropped down to zero Celsius. So the ice is really thin when I was drilling through those uh, previous holes. Looks like he didn't use the very shallow ones. So this looks like a good place to start. I mean, I've never been to this lake before. So uh, getting the aqua view down there is gonna help a lot to see what's going on. What kind of structure we got going down there and see if we can find a transition. But other than that, looks pretty good to me. All right, let's go. We are recording, so let's see what's going on down there. Oh, this is really shallow. So, probably about two feet under the ice here. And uh, looks like there's a lot of weed growth, which can be good. Would be nice to find that uh, transition where the weeds stop growing so thick, or on the top of a drop maybe. Doesn't look like there's any clear transition point here. All right, let's move on to the next guy. Okay, oh, there's a trout on the screen right, right now. So that's a good sign, yeah. Just a little trout. There he is there. You can kind of see how the, the weeds are definitely not as thick as they were in that shallower hole. But, it's still not the best transition. I mean, not bad. I mean, I think this is around five or six, maybe seven feet. And if you look down deeper, kind of looks like the weeds are dissipating. Okay, now we got our last hole here. Looks like somebody was fishing here. And it looks like the weeds are not as present as they were in the other holes. Yeah, it looks like it kind of just fades off and then as you look deeper, it just kind of drops off, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna set up on this hole and then Maybe put the jaw jacker or a dead stick in the other hole because I saw that trout swimming in the in the shallower hole. So often that's a good sign. If you're seeing fish there, they're probably traveling along that same depth. So I'm gonna set the aqua view up here and then and then hopefully get the uh, jaw jacker in a shallower hole. Oh, there's a perch right there. Interesting. I didn't know there was a perch in this lake. Let's see if we can get him to bite. He looks really small though. Well, that's pretty cool. Good to know that there's perch in here. I don't know if they were stocked or if they're native to this lake, but when I was checking the regulations, I believe there was just trout. I could be wrong. Oh, 
There's the fish on. Ah, he came off. Shoot. Good sign. We had a fish on the jaw jacker go off, but uh, it didn't hook him. It definitely was a fish on there. I could tell because when the when it went off, the rod was bending as if the fish was on there, but it didn't get there in time and the hook didn't set in his mouth. Oh, there's a trout back there. Doesn't seem bothered at all with the spoon. I mean, he definitely saw it. Doesn't give me much confidence in an active bait like this because there's definitely fish in the area. It's just a matter of presenting something that interests them or triggers a bite. Because if they're not hungry, I mean, it's got to be more of a reaction bite and you would think that a spoon would, would trigger that. But since I got a hit on that uh, tungsten jig with a mealworm, Gonna try that out for a bit on uh, a different rod here. Give it a try for a bit, see if that gets more interest from the trout. They cruise on by so quickly. So, it's worth a shot. Oh, there's a big trout. Oh. There we go. Got him. First fish of the day, little rainbow. Okay. <laughs> Can't even grab them. You know, we're in such shallow water. I didn't even really need to reel the rod up. Okay, we got him now. <laughs> and did he spit the hook already? Oh yeah, he spit the hook. Right on. Nice little rainbow. Quickly show him to you on the camera. Nice rainbow. Beautiful colors on him. Don't know when this guy was stocked, but it's probably 14, 15, maybe 16 inches. You can keep trout from this lake, but uh, I've heard they're a little muddy. I'm not interested in keeping any today, but uh, we'll let this guy go. All right, see you later, Mr. Rainbow Trout. Hopefully we catch a few more of you. Woo. We got one. <laughs> oh, there's a little perch in the back there again. These are the, uh, the mealworms I'm using. Now they do come live, but uh, I left them out in the cold too long and most of them are dead now. I caught that last trout on a dead mealworm. So I mean, they still work and it uh, looks like a good natural presentation for the fish. Usually try to get that mealworm as horizontal as possible and uh, make sure that knot is sitting uh, so that it makes the jig sit horizontal as well. And you do that just by moving your knot over to the inside of the, of the jig as opposed to the outside or directly on top. Sometimes it'll just sag and your worm will look like it's hanging on an angle. And usually you find that uh, a horizontal worm can make all the difference actually. There's a trout. Liked it, but then bailed quick. Oh, there's a John Jacker. It is on. There we go. nicer. He's just swimming down. Got him. There we go. This fish untangled. Didn't see that one on the camera, but another rainbow on the jaw jacker. Just another small guy. Show him to you here. Nice little rainbow. Similar size to the other ones. Not very old fish. I mean, they stock this lake pretty pretty often, sometimes twice a year. So we'll let this guy go now. Well, I've been here for about an hour and a half now fishing. And uh, that's two rainbows, one on my rod, 
and uh, one on the jaw jacker. And one as I was setting up the jaw jacker, but I ended up losing him at the hole. But uh, for an hour and a half, that's not bad. I mean, seems a little slow. I've only got about half an hour left. So I mean, I'm gonna set up the jaw jacker again. And if we get another fish, that's awesome. If not, definitely worth it to come out for an hour and a half and catch three fish. There's another jaw jacker. He's on there. All right. Decent fight here. Nice rainbow. This one came right after that other one. Right on. And he's out of the water. Perfect. Oh, gotta grab him. There we go. You can see he's hooked right in the top of the mouth. Jaw Jacker did a great job setting that hook. Kept it on there. Really easy to come out. There he is. Nice third rainbow on top of the ice. Two on the Jaw Jacker, one on my rod. Can't complain, man. That's awesome. Nothing big. I mean, if I was keeping these, they're decent for eating though. But uh, we'll let this guy go. See you later, buddy. Right on. Okay, well that's gonna wrap it up for me today. Uh, caught four fish today, which is awesome. Two hours of fishing. If you ever get a chance, try out these trout lakes. Really easy to access. I mean, I drove up here. Ice is really thick right now. If you haven't uh, fished for trout, definitely give it a try. I mean, trout give a good fight. They're finicky, but it takes a lot of finesse to catch them, and it's definitely a good challenge. Good switch up from catching walleye and pike all the time. So, I mean, definitely gonna be trying out some other trout lakes uh, and trout ponds in the future. So, stay tuned for future episodes on that. And uh, thanks for tuning in, we'll catch you on the next one.